up, up, flappers? It's your boy, Mr. Wacky Bed here, coming at you again. Today, we're going to be looking at some of the updates uh, in the past few days. There has been updates uh, for smaller things, and I didn't feel like I needed to make a video about it. But now, um, it's compounded. There's actually two different uh, additional things that Mahoyo has pushed out. And we're going to get into both of them. I'm going to tell you guys what I think. I'm going to give you my unfiltered, honest opinions as to how this will affect the game. And uh, whether I'm excited for it. Alright, so without further ado, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah do all that stuff whatever but okay let's get into it so uh, as you guys see we got the genshin impact official dev notes i've been talking about this over the past uh, few live streams and uh, in some videos i was like they took this away that's no bueno this was the only way it, they can reflect to us whether they are listening or whether they know what we actually want so um it's good they brought this back actually this is a good step in the right direction and of course we have the inazuma diaries with the new tsurumi island so this one i want to go over as well but first let's do it one by one i glossed over this i don't know exactly what each of the question and answers are i did look through like one or two specifically because they caught my eye but overall eh, you know it's an improvement to a certain degree compared to some of the worst dev notes we've ever gotten so I guess that's starting us off right, all right? Hopefully in the future, this does not go away. It becomes a every single patch thing, and we only build off of what is currently um, happening, all right? So hopefully we go from this to maybe more direct live streams or direct communication methods by Mahoyo. One can only hope. So let's start from the first one, right? The question here is, is there any way to obtain gadgets from events that I've missed? I regret missing out. All right, this seems to be a very early game, uh, newer player focused question. So the answer is for travelers who have missed out, don't worry. In version 2.2, travelers can use Mora to purchase the Wind Bloom Festival commemorative balloon, Wind Song Lear, and Wind Blessed Harpatsta gadgets from Marjorie Store in Mondstadt. So here's the thing, right? With something like this, I know some veteran players might feel like, oh, well, you know, I worked so hard for this stuff, right? I played all the way back. Now the newer players get to get all these exclusive stuff. Well, technically, it's not all the exclusive stuff there were some event furnitures which i think honestly at this point are going to be more valuable going forward uh they're just going to be more exclusive as time goes on for furniture so for real collectors you should be collecting the furniture pieces honestly i feel like that stuff is going to be the one that blows people away if let's say three years down the line people are like oh how did you get that like that's so cool like that furniture oh it's so uh, how did you get it like, oh well you know i think i got it like two three years ago during an event that's baller <laughs> that's baller so second question Zhongli's shield would sometimes overlap with ganyu's crosshair making it difficult not just mobile users actually this thing kind of pisses me off a little bit when i play ganyu and people call me ass cheeks at it uh <laughs> It's not me, because I always run Zhongli with Ganyu, and yes, the crosshair does get uh, blocked out a little bit by Zhongli's shield uh, effects. So yes, so in version 2.2, we have also worked to optimize this. We will reduce the opacity of some effects that will obstruct the crosshair when bow characters switch to aim mode. Yes, thank you very much for addressing this. You see, these are some of the smaller problems I've been playing the game. Does it break the game? Absolutely not. Is it very easy to work around this stuff? Yeah, you just get used to it over time, but it, it's great to see see that uh, these kind of annoyances in the game are slowly going to go away as time goes on good good so question three can the previous chosen options be saved in hangout events it's a bit tedious when i'm trying to get all the different endings so i have no idea because i haven't played the hangout events for a long time i am not equipped to uh, answer or judge this uh, response and whether how many people want it don't know all right controllers for ps5 don't work very well on pc when with again don't have controllers for ps5 i wouldn't know <laughs> i hope you know for people who are involved in these uh please comment below let us know if this these are like uh, good changes because you know i i shared my frustrations with uh with this one with the Zhongli shield blocking ganyu's crosshair but for people who don't have ganyu or people who don't have Zhongli that plays ganyu they will know they're they don't like oh, what what the hell is that all right so pl please let us know uh regarding these all right so 
Question, uh, this is five now, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, question five. Inazuma's transport commissions take too long. Sorry, I don't do any commissions in Inazuma. I still do them in Monster because I feel like I just want to smash them out quicker they are mostly the same whether you're in inazuma the liyue or monstat so i just do monstat i'm familiar with it i'm i pretty much know every single one and i can do them out really fast like in three minutes or less so honestly don't think that's a really big one uh sixth question Riding shogun's elemental skill chakra disinderata is too bright if you look at it <laughs> In comparison to version 2 more we optimize Rider Shogun's Chaga Descenderata by reducing its brightness in various lighting environments. Okay, like this one is, you, you know, like this is the one that I think of most people are like, like how did, like these questions make it look like Mahoyo comes up with their own questions to, to fill out this space. Although, you know, hey, it's great that they're once again communicating with us. It, it, it's, it's, going to be something we look towards going forward to to start eradicating this kind of stuff you can include this in the patch notes mahoyo you don't have to specifically address it in a direct you know community post because you you know a lot of people are looking towards your 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 responses and your communication towards us this it just takes up unnecessary space all right so next question is it possible to add photos as wall furnishing for the serena teapot again you know you, this doesn't have to be a q a thing Right? This does not have to be a Q&A thing. You don't have to pretend like a lot of people are asking this. You can just simply come out and say, we developed photo frame, right? You could have included this in your live stream. Some of this stuff just should have been in the live stream. Like these kind of small optimizations, this photo frame, you could have just did a QOL section in the live stream and mentioned this stuff and then save this question and answer section for actual questions and answers for the community, All right? Next, uh, can we see the lineup of enemies when we are forming our parties in the Spiral Abyss? It's very difficult to remember enemy lineups when forming my party. Uh, yeah, yes, this one is good. And I really hope going off of this, they will let us uh, adjust artifacts, adjust weapons also within the Abyss UI. Um, that's going to be really important, but I guess they have to develop a whole entire new UI unless they can let us go from the abyss uh window straight into our character uh window which could be a possibility too and then if you just exit out of the character window you'll be brought back to the abyss window and not at the entrance of the abyss where you have to go through the animation the, the answer to their question was uh can we see enemy lineups now when we are preparing for our team so the development team has noted this development team will optimize the display of enemy information of the spiral abyss in subsequent versions when the spiral abyss is changing floors you can view the enemy information this does not say it's coming in patch 2.2 but in subsequent versions so patch 2.3 maybe next question is it possible to restore my default team after exiting co-op mode i have to do it manually every time i don't play co-op very much anymore mostly because co-op just doesn't have any benefits for for the person who's doing the carry or the person with the strongest character right if let's say if you do co-op there are you know additional drop rates to sign me up i've been lining up co-oping every day but unfortunately not However, I do know the issue they're talking about when you do do co-op, when you do do, uh, okay, very funny. When you do co-op with other players and then they leave, your team just completely gets messed up. It's like a hurricane came through and, and just messed everything up. Uh, I, I do understand. It's good that they're optimizing this uh, a little bit. People who play a lot with their friends, you guys probably know the frustration a lot more. But for other people, eh, you couldn't care less, but it's good to see there they're trying to lean towards optimizing the co-op experience just because just because i'm interested to see what they're gonna do with co-op going forward all right exciting stuff that's pretty much it and uh down here we got uh we're also fixing an issue in single player mode whereby the duration and cooldowns of opponent skills would not stop after the game was paused yeah, I don't think uh, Genshin is that intense of a game to be worrying about enemy cooldowns. Like, who, honestly, who uh, keeps track of your enemy cooldowns? It's, <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever. Um, I'm happy. All right. Overall, I'm happy that they've they've reached back out to us and they've shown us uh, that they're willing to also communicate uh, for 
the live stream in CN at the very least on Bilibili. Chat was not restricted. I, I heard on Twitch they put it into emote only, which is like, okay, but um, it's good that we could still chat. They could have easily just blocked us out completely. Didn't do this and just continue pushing out their agenda. It's good. I think a lot of the community were stressing on communication, communication, and then, then they brought this back. Okay, good. Good step one. Uh, let's see this evolve into something more, hopefully. All right. Now, since we're here, since I got you guys here, we're going to go through the Inazuma Diary. So I want to go look through uh, Tsurumi Island. So it's located in the south of Inazuma, an island that has been locked off by perpetual fog where few people dare enter. Travelers will be entrusted with a commission to head to Tsurumi Island and explore this wonderful island step by step. So it is incredibly easy to lose one's way when moving forward amidst the fog of Tsurumi Island. It is said that those who are not accepted by the mysterious fog will get lost within before finally getting expelled. Oh. Ritual stone piles set up by the civilization that inhabits Tsurumi Island are scattered around the island. Storm stones can be lit by using Electro and they will help you forge a path through the thick fog as they provide respite from the fog's continuous enroachment. Okay, okay, this is like some uh, Silent Hill kind of stuff, all right? Are we going to get some jump scares? Maybe, maybe. I am excited for these mechanics. Like... When, remember back when Mahoyo first introduced Inazuma, they said, you know, we're not going to make any changes to the Electro Element, uh, but when you're in Inazuma, the Electro Element is going to be inevitable. It's going to be necessary to use uh, Electro to navigate through Inazuma. And, and I see what they mean. And I just I just hope this is not like a such a forceful way to make people use Electro. And, and it kind of feels like, in a way, it likely degrades the element to be like, oh, it's like a utility feature for transport or navigation when you're on Inazuma. It just doesn't feel right. Okay, I hope this is not the... I know this is a tangent, but I hope this is the, not the last we'll see of Electro. Uh changes so specific path by following these white glowing stone piles you will be able to tread some specific path through the fog when you lose your direction in the mist you can also rely on the guidance of these light sources to find a way forward again i wonder how bad it's going to be is our mini maps going to be fogged out and blurred out because that would be very frustrating for a lot of people right like it's going to be very frustrating for a lot of people to deal with um navigating through maps i don't know how many people are going to enjoy this uh this feeling of lostness and stumbling like running in circles <laughs> we'll see um remarkable chest in Surum island there is a brand new class of treasure chests and harvestable items waiting to be discovered by travelers after opening these uniquely shaped remarkable chests you will be able to obtain furnishing blueprints ah this is the one they mentioned in the live stream we're sure that travelers will never miss any treasure chest, not even in the fog. Right? That's damn, damn right. <laughs> damn right. Because uh, we have the interactive map. This is all going to get mapped out in a couple of days. Uh, fluorescent fungus. Mushroom that glows like a night light. Some curious power lies hidden within it. <laughs> okay uh these are the new monsters i heard uh i mean not i heard these are the new monsters they have corrosion built into their attacks so yep like anticipated mahoyo introduced this mechanic within the spiral bits and then going forward they apply this into the overworld and i only assume this is going to get worse and worse i mean not worse and worse this is going to get more prevalent and more anti-shield mechanics are going to exist within the game as we approach sumeru great to see it you love to see this kind of stuff because uh, this means that Mahoyo is making an actual effort to shift the meta or add variants to metas um, and sometimes just create new ways to play the game in different zones so the game doesn't get too stale when you travel to newer areas, all right? It actually feels like you have to adapt to survive. But yeah, here it is, the corrosion status. When a character protected by a shield is hit, the corrosion status will also be applied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, characters being corroded will lose a fraction of the HP every second after characters can be brought down by corrosion. When a non-active character is less than 15%, they will no longer lose HP. So this is a very, very yikes thing. They they apply it to your whole team, it seems like. With one character gets hit, the whole team gets affected. The characters off-field can't die from it, the character on-field can. So fighting these monsters are going to be uh, kind of a pain in the ass, honestly. <laughs> but 
it, it, it's fine. It, I think at this point, anything that increases difficulty and risk in uh, combat is welcomed for Genshin Impact. All right. So with that said, thank you guys for watching. This is going to be a slightly longer video. It's into two sections. And I'm glad Mahoyo is pushing this stuff out still. And um, I'm going to be live streaming tonight. I'm going to be talking about this stuff. Join me and see... Uh, Join me and I want to hear about your opinions. How excited are you or are you disappointed? All the sorts, all right? And uh, yeah, maybe we'll we'll play a bit of Genshin <laughs> after such a long time. I hope to see you guys there. Till then, stay safe. Peace, peace.